Hey guys, welcome back to Homeschoolology. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Nikki. I'm a homeschooling mom of four. I have a ninth grader, fifth grader, first grader, and kindergarten. And on this channel, we share secular homeschooling resources with you as well as our lives in general and lots of other things. So if that interests you, I hope you will stick around. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the science chunks um, lessons from elemental science. So I have done a video before and kind of like my initial looks and kind of just like a look at the program from Science Chunks. So I'll link that video for you guys here. Um, but basically, just to give you a little summary, um, Science Chunks is like literally chunks. So, you know, one every every unit is one kind of uh, topic. And then they are different individual units, although they follow the same structure. So it's, you know, you're not having to learn something new all the time. It's the same structure, different topics, but you can pick and choose which ones you do. Um, they do have them, they do sell them as like a year bundle. Um, and you, so you can do those things in a year. I just bought all the bundles. They're relatively inexpensive. So I just bought all the bundles. And then I literally let my kids choose which ones they want to do. So the science chunks are designed for grades K through six. So you can do this as a, you know, family subject. And there is on each um, one here, there is like a book to read for younger kiddos and a book to read for older kiddos. Um, we obviously are using the older kiddo book. Um, I Well, not that's not obvious to you, but I'm doing this with my older two kiddos. Sometimes my little ones will come along. Um, if they feel like it mostly just for the activities but you know we're going to address this stuff later again with them so i'm not super concerned about what they pick up here um but with my older two obviously my fifth grader falls in that range of k through sixth grade but my ninth grader does not so how do i make this a little bit more um me for her so that's what we're going to look at today i'm going to give you a look at like how we use this program and what i do to beef it up for my ninth grader to make it more on her level um she still really enjoys like activities and things like that and i didn't want to take that away from her um and so that you know this still works really well for our family but obviously she needs to go dive a little deeper into these things and i'm going to talk to you about what we do for that okay so first off here is the um how i do it so i do have a binding machine and i usually like to bind things but um this is so small <laughs> that i just I don't really need to bind it. So what I've been doing is just putting them in these file folders. Um, and then I have, you know, I have my instruction pages right here on top. And then on the bottom of that, so let me let me separate this out for you to see. So this is all my, my instruction pages is. It's, so, it's really small, so it's not really worth binding. Um, and so, but this is my instruction pages that I need for the lessons. And then everything else in this folder is two copies of the student pages. So what they, what I think that we're going to use for this. Science Chunks gives you two options, either notebooking or lap booking. Um, we do the lap booking, but as a notebook, okay? <laughs> so, um, but I have a video where I talk about interactive notebooking and what we use for that and how we do it and all of that stuff. Um, but so what we're doing is just taking the lap booking pieces and putting it into a notebook. So, um, but then I did pull a few of the, the notebooking pages um, for some of the activities that I want them to go more in depth on and things like that. Um, so we are using obviously the the book for older kiddos those are encyclopedias and stuff which are definitely still fine for my ninth grader um and then to kind of soup it up a little bit um i am using either crash course videos or other videos documentary videos or things that i find on youtube for my daughter and then i have her write down a couple of things that she learned from that video either in her notebook or type it out or something like that to make it a little bit more in depth 
So that is what I'm doing currently to make it kind of a little bit more advanced for her. We're just going into more detail, talking more about them. Um, and then at the end of this, um, we are going to do a project. They're going to pick a biome and we're going to do a project. And that I used to actually do this exact project that I'm, I'm thinking about uh, with my high schoolers. Um, and so we're going to do that project at the end of this specific unit and that's kind of how I'm going to kind of do it for the rest of the year is that like we're going to go through the unit have those videos to kind of beef it up a little bit and then at the end my oldest daughter is going to have some kind of project output that demonstrates that she's learned this information um, and so that is kind of how I'm taking something that's not necessarily designed for high school and making it high school um, now your kiddo has to enjoy things like like you know my daughter still really enjoys coloring these things and cutting them and um, she really enjoys doing this kind of stuff still okay so like that is you know your kiddo has to still kind of be into that and my kiddo is so um and in fact she really prefers that to overdoing like you know like just book work so um the, we get the freedom as homeschoolers to adjust the learning to our child and so that is what i'm doing you don't have to use a resource that is specifically designed for a high schooler if that's not what your kiddo is into. You can take something that is maybe for a little bit of a lower grade level and soup it up, beef it up to make it what works for your kid. And so that is what we are doing. I am going to insert a little... Um, video of us doing a lesson here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about um, and how this is going. Some other units like we're going to probably cover um, cells this year with my oldest daughter and I am going to pull some resources um, from you know videos online microscope activities I have a book that's microscope activities so I'm going to pull like those kinds of things in to beef up what we're doing so she gets a more in-depth understanding my middle daughter is along for the ride for all of this she joins in she's required to do everything that the science chunk says she I make her watch the videos because um, what, what we do is we like color um, and cut out all those not lap booking pieces while the video is happening. So I make her listen to the video. I don't necessarily hold her as accountable as I do as my older daughter to like making sure she's doing all the things, okay? Mm -hmm. so, all the extras that we that we are adding in. If she wants to do them, a lot of times they're fun. She wants to do them, she comes along. She doesn't know any different. So, um, <clears throat> so it's working really well and so far it's working really, really well for us. Like I said, I'm going to insert some um, video here of us doing a lesson so you can kind of see um, what I'm doing. I'm using my homeschool planet, so I'll probably jump over here to show you how I kind of like set up this in my homeschool planet um, to kind of keep track of everything and make everything really easy to follow along with because this does take a little bit of teacher prep, which you guys know is not my favorite thing, but I'm only having to do it every like five to six weeks and so I can do that. I can sit down for an hour or so and organize my thoughts into the homeschool planet and then it's all set up and ready to go for us. So that is a good compromise. I'm happy with that process. So let me, um, I'm going to show you us doing it and I'm going to show you the homeschool planet. I don't know what order that's going to go in, but let's jump over to those things. All right, so here we are. I created my own lesson plan for this. It's super simple. What I did was I went in and I typed in every unit. And then these little plus signs right here shows. So the first week or the first lesson, we watched this video and we talked about what an ecosystem was. They wrote down a few things in their notebook. That's how that's what we did on day one. Day two, we looked at the book, we watched the video and we did the activities within the book. Um, and then lesson three, we watched this video or actually we haven't done this lesson yet, but <laughs> we're going to watch this video, talk about climate, talk about climate change. They're going to write some things down in their notebook. Uh, this was not in the original lesson plan. It didn't talk about climate necessarily. I added this in to beef up the program for my daughter, my oldest daughter. But you can see here, I was able to go in. I found a playlist on the webs or on YouTube. They're all linked right here. It tells them what book to get out. And then we do what's directed in the lesson plan. 
It's literally that simple, that easy um, to set up. And this was only a five week program um, and which they're gonna have a, another week to work on the project. So I just didn't add that in here. Uh, but as you can see, I just literally made wrote it out added in what i wanted to add in um and then i'm going to close this and show you what it looks like on our calendar so as you can see here it is in our lesson plan um and it says to complete the lap book pages look over the book that it's provided right here and then here is the desert biome video um, and then we check off this box and that's what we do. Super simple, super easy, already laid out for me. I don't have to do a lot. I know what to do, I know what to expect. The one thing that I do have to do is like, which I didn't do it this time, but I think next time what I'm gonna do is as I'm picking our activities that we're gonna do, I'm gonna make a list of things that I need and just go ahead and get all the things so that they're here and ready. But right now, um, because I didn't do that this time, what I do have to do is kind of just like peek ahead um, for the next week and make sure I don't need to pick anything up. Like I, we didn't, we were out of Epsom salt and so I had to go get some Epsom salt for the, to do the crystal painting, which I shared over on Instagram. So that's that it's super simple super easy okay so today we are doing forest biomes so i have my information here and then i'm going to set the kids up with their um things. things to color so we have this grasslands um lap book i mean forest grasslands is next and i looked at that <laughs> um and then i'm going to give them their vocabulary cards um, from this as well and then this is their uh, this is from the notebooking thing so I have them color work on coloring this they have lots of things to color cut out and tape or paste into their notebooks while we are working on or while we are watching the video What makes something a forest? Uh, a forest is a lot of trees, mostly. And then there's animals, and then there's rain. Actually, that might be more of a rainforest. Oh, we were just watching so the rainforest. There's a forest is something that has lots of trees, right? Yes. How many different types of forests are there? Um, are we including rainforest? Yeah. At least 20. No, how many? There's three main categories. Um, oh, I just gave you the answer. So there's three main categories. We learned about two today. What were the two we learned about today? Um, rain and temperate. So temperate and tropical. Oh, is that what which you're includes today? rain? It's. So I need you to copy this down onto your. Facts about force. Can you um, help me? So I wanted to show you inside. This is the five star Mead or the Mead five star um, interactive notebooks. That's what we use for interactive notebooking. It has this fancy little pocket for the things she's not finished with yet. A table of contents, which she doesn't start filling out. But this is what it looks like inside of our thing so it's just the lap booking pieces but we just are putting it in a notebook so it's all in one place um and yeah that's what it will look like so that is a look at like the science chunks and how we are using them in our homeschool how i would use them for you know my my person my student who is in the range and how i beef it up to my student who is outside of the range to make it a little bit more for her. If you have any questions about this, please ask them down below in the comments. I will ha be happy to answer them the best I can. Um, and 
while you're down there, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel, ring that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram at homeschoolology. I've already shared something there about us using this program, um, and I love to chat with you guys either over there or down in the comments here. Um, so yeah, let's chat about it. Have you ever tried these? Have you ever used them? Are you interested in looking at them? Um, all the things. So yeah. I think that's going to be it for me today. I hope you'll come back and chat with me again soon, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Ooh, look at this. This is our hand.